Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the animation archive, loading animation methods, how to search and find appropriate animation, and how to save new animation in the archive. Having a good archive in the production helps animators to reuse animations. And from producer's point of view, it saves a lot of time and hassle. There is a couple of different options in the archive, like categories, which divides all animations in different folders. You can load all parts or only selected parts. Here you can define loading methods, append, insert, and cycle. There is an option to show only my animations and an option to show only selected character animations. And tag system, which helps you to find animations by using specific tags. And here, you can define which transformation tracks you want to load. We go through these options one by one in this video. So, let's get started. These human-like characters are created using Character Generator. So, we can share their animations under Human category. Archive is not just for characters. We can also store object animations here. Like this fish, which is not a humanoid character. If you have the chance to get Quadruped Generator, all animations created by using quadrupeds goes under this folder automatically. Sometimes you want to temporarily save an animation in the archive and you don't want to include it in the main folders. Temp folder lets you save this kind of test without conflict with the main animations. To load an animation, select one part of the character. No matter which part is selected, Left click on the thumbnail to load the animation. All keyframes for all parts of the character will be removed. A new animation will be inserted at frame 0. By selecting each part of the character, you can edit its keyframes easily. If you look closer at the thumbnail, you can see the duration value right after the name of the animation, which is 96 frames for this animation. If you load this animation, you can see that the last frame in track bar is also 96, same as the duration we have seen in the thumbnail. In this example, we loaded animation on all parts of the character. Let's say we want to load animation on just the upper parts of the character. There is an option in the archive which you can use to load animation only on the selected parts. Select all parts controllers, change option to selected parts, and click on the thumbnail to load the animation. Now, upper parts of the character follows the new animation, while lower parts still follows the previous animation. The project may include a lot of different characters, and of course they don't usually have the exact same anatomy. If you create these characters with Character Generator, Animation Archive gives you the ability to share their animations, even if they have different anatomies and sizes. It doesn't matter with which character you save the animation. Every animation will be loaded on all characters. Rotations are the same, but positions will be multiplied with the ratio number depending on the character anatomy. If you load a walk animation for all characters, you see that the distance every character goes depends on the scale of its feet even though every character has a different anatomy and size, animations will be loaded as accurately as possible. But of course, sometimes you need to edit some keyframes, like this part, which must be moved in some keyframes to fit the animation on the character. In these cases, you can edit keyframes one by one, or you can use the curve editor to modify all of them at the same time. It's a good idea to draw and paint switch targets in Photoshop based on standard roles, like putting smile target in the first switch. This standard helps you to share switch animations for all characters. In this case, you can see animation works perfect except for mouse target in some keyframes. This happens because number of mouse targets for these two characters are not the same. If you load the animation on the character which you save the animation with, you can see that this switch is for mouse target number 6 and there is no such target in another character. For solving this problem, 
you can load the new mouse target or you may want to remove them altogether. There are four methods for loading an animation. If you set option to replace and load the animation, it doesn't matter where the time slider is. All keyframes will be removed and the new animation will be inserted at frame zero. You see that the last frame of this animation is here. When you load the new animation, all keyframes will be removed and new animation will be replaced. If you want to append new animation just after the existing one, you can use append method. This animation will end at frame 48 and there is no keyframe after that. By choosing append option, no matter where the time slider is, the new animation will be loaded at the end of the old animation. One frame for a transition is not enough and the first animation will jump to the second animation in a rough manner. So undo the operation and go back to the archive. Change transition duration to 10 and load animation again. Now 10 frames are quite enough to create a smooth transition. You can also add new keyframes at transition space to make it more efficient. Sometimes you want to insert an animation between another animation at a specific frame. Here we have a walk animation and we want to insert the jump animation. The last frame of the walk animation is 192. For doing this, move the time slider to the frame you want to insert the new animation. Change loading option to insert and then click on jump animation. Walk animation will be divided into two sections and jump animation will be inserted between these two sections. Jump keyframes are inserted at frame 80 and when the jump ends, Section 2 of the walk animation will start. As a matter of fact, jump animation pushes walk keyframes forward. And all keyframes you see here belong to the walk animation. At the transition frames, you see that the animation will jump to the other very roughly. So undo the operation. The timeline changes back to the walk animation. Open animation archive again. Change transition duration to 10. And load jump animation again. Depending on the animation size, insertion sometimes takes a little while to load. Now you see that the animation will transit very smoothly. And also you have 10 frames to add new keys to and make your own transition. In the old school way of making walk cycles, we create one place loop like this. Then we duplicate keyframes to create more and more cycles. The first and the last frame are the same, so we overlap the first frame of the new animation on the last frame of the previous. We can repeat this process until the duration of the animation is more than the time we want the character to walk. The character walks in place, which means it doesn't move forward. To make the character move forward, as long as it walks, we need to animate the main controller of the character. In the last frame of the animation, move the main controller to where you want the character to stop. As you can see, the character is scooting on the ground. And this is not what we want. Maybe we can make it better by converting position tangent to linear. But actually syncing distance the character moves with animation speed is really hard. Let's see how we can make cycle animation by using 3D cutout functionality. Here we have another character that we want to load animation on. Open the animation archive, change loading method to cycle, and define how many times you want to repeat a cycle. Let's say six times. Then find one cycle animation you have saved in the archive, for example this one. Then click on the thumbnail to load. Cycles will load one after another up to six times. And if you take a look at the animation, you see the character really moves forward. And if you compare these two animations, you see that there is no longer such a scooting using the new method. Let's say we have an animation and we want to save it in the archive. So we open save animation window. First of all, we choose the frames we want to save. We can choose all the keyframes in the timeline. 
or we can enter the start and end frames manually. The next step is to create a preview. While AutoZoom is checked, viewport will be zoomed in to where the character is, in the middle of the animation. But you can also uncheck AutoZoom, move the viewport to where you like, and make a preview again. While the preview is being created, you can stop the process by hitting Escape key. Create the preview again and again until you feel the preview is good enough to be shown in the archive. The next step is to write a name for the animation. And Tag System helps you to find an animation easier when you search it in the archive. So for this animation we add walk and slow because he walks slowly he's dancing and of course he's funny if you are looking for a tag which is not in the list you can right click on any category to add a new one note that accessing this option needs a special permission which is defined in the user management section and the last option is temp which saves the animation in the temp category this is useful when you want to save some test animations and you don't want to save it in the main categories. Now, if we click on Save Animation button, the animation is archived here and is ready to be used in the production. We have a lot of ways to search in the archive and find the appropriate animation. The first option is My Animations. If you check this checkbox, all animations saved by the current username will be shown. Next option is selected character. While this checkbox is enabled, if you select a character from the scene and click on the refresh button, only animations of the selected character will be shown. If you remember from the save process, we specify some tags for animation. Here we can use them to search and find the animation. For example, we want to see all walk animations, so we add a walk tag. Let me uncheck selected character. Here we go, all walk animations are here. Next, we want to see all dancing and walk animations, so we add a dance tag. Only one animation has this tag. If you hold down the control key and click on the thumbnail, you can see all tags for this animation. Here you can also remove or add new tags. I think a slow tag is also good for this animation. Next, we want to find all in place walks. So we remove the dance and add in place tag. This is a walk animation which moves in place. When if have all tags together is selected, the animation will be shown in the result if it has all the tags. But if we choose another option, all walk animations plus all in place animations will be shown in the result. When we load an animation, all transformation tracks will be loaded on the character. But sometimes we need to filter which animation tracks we want to load. For example, if we uncheck exposition and reload the animation, you can see that the character doesn't move right or left anymore. If we uncheck Z position, the character doesn't move up or down anymore. And if we uncheck Y for rotation, there will be no rotation. Note that in general, we don't need X and Z rotations. Also, we rarely need Y position. Because we are actually animating a 2D character inside a 3D environment. To show you the scale option, let me scale some parts of the character. While the scale option is unchecked, I load the animation. You see there is no change in the scale, but by enabling the scale checkbox, the character changes to the original scale. Animation won't be loaded on male controller at all. So if you want the scale of the character to be untouched, always scale the main controller. You need to keep in mind that mirror animation is actually negative scale. 
which means if you want to filter mirrors, you can control it with scale options. I mirror the head, so the character looks forward. Without loading scale, mirrors won't be loaded. And if I check scale option, mirrors will also be loaded on the character. Thank you for watching Animation Archive tutorial.